I'm always excited by what I see out in the world, whether it's an astonishing color of a house or an unusual planting, how other people interpret their own environment. I think I'm about looking, whether it's nature or anything else. I went through a big change probably 15, 20 years ago now where I had gone to see a uh, Goya show at the MFA and I went to see what I normally would look at, what the objects were in the painting and how they were painted and how the paint was put on. And suddenly I realized that I wasn't interested in the subject matter of the painting at all. I was interested in the strength of the spaces between the op so-called objects in the painting, like a horse or a man sitting on a horse or landscape in the background. That didn't, that specificity didn't interest me. It was the way the, the color shape met the edge of the canvas. It took a couple of days for it to sink in what I was really excited about and why was I excited about that? I didn't know. How was I going to do that in my own painting? How was I going to go from realistic portraits or landscapes into this abstraction? I started with a simple shape of a bowl and I filled the whole canvas with the bowl and I had the opening or a cup at the top of the canvas coming down like this. And it read as an abstract shape, but it also was recognizable as a bowl. And then I started putting um, the crackling of like Japanese bowls that are very old on the shape of the bowl. and those shapes became important, and then the shapes to the edge of the canvas became important, and I was gone. I grew up on Long Island in a small town on the North Shore called Port Washington. And it was a sleepy little town, but it was also a great place to grow up. When it came time to choose what college I wanted to go to, and I very much wanted to branch out of Long Island, Initially um, looked at Cooper Union and Rhode Island School of Design and I applied to both and I was lucky to get a scholarship at RISD and so I came here and uh, have been here essentially ever since. I worked at the Brown University Physics, High Energy Physics Department for 10 years as a scanner and uh, there I was trained to look for specific uh, interactions of high energy particles that have been photographed from three different points of view. These little particles hovering in there, you know, how do you know which way they're going and why? And that everything that you look at is broken up that way, but we can't see it. So how, how to express that sense of energy um, really interested me. And I finally uh, came to sort of a closure after working a number of years on those kinds of images and decided, okay, I have to do something else. I'm, I'm repeating myself. I need to move on into something else. And the simplest way was to do actually the opposite, which was to have broken shapes that go either coming in on the canvas or going out on the canvas. You didn't know and suspended in the space. And that came to look at, again, the energy. How is it hovering? Is it, are they vibrating with each other? What's in front of what? And that still is, is very uh, important, the energy of a mark. Why does it stay there? What is it about the way you look at something that tells you that? I knew since I was five I was going to be a painter. Um, I was attracted to it. My mother had a drawer for rainy days where we could go in and there were all kinds of crayons and watercolors and things and um, I loved to go in there and, and to start making something and I think I was always a visual person. I took up the viola da gamba because early music is, is pretty big in New England particularly in Boston, and I loved being part of a small group, an ensemble, and I worked hard to become good enough to be able to uh, do that. 
for many years. And um, finally, there was a point where I felt I had to make a decision between playing music and doing the visual painting and printmaking, which I do also. Um, and I decided the visual was what I really wanted. Painter primarily, but printmaking is an extraordinary world in itself. I love the ink that goes into the paper, particularly the blacks. So I've worked with a lot of aquatints, which is an involved process, but you can get some beautiful, deep, rich blacks that way. And that influenced my painting. So for many years I painted only with black and a variety of whites with the black. And finally have worked my way into high color, um, but that black is still the magic one for me. I live here and work here. And that was actually my first experience of living and doing my artwork in the same space. To be able to just walk out and see something that I'm in the middle of working on and seeing it sort of for the first time again is, is a wonderful way of living and working with your work. I'm working on a book project which is based on 14 etchings. It's really an art book. And it's looking at what a page of typed words looks like. What started that all is a funny little story, which had happened seven years before I even did it visually. I had a cat. I had a book that was open on the table. The cat came over, looked at the book, and I thought, what does the cat think it's seeing there? You know, what is it in the cat's life? And that sort of festered in my mind of how non-looking we are when we look at a written type page. So I've worked with that idea. Um, and inadvertently, when I went to breaking up the lines, I started off with them being at the edge, but then I went across broken lines across the whole paper. And I call it a text in five movements because I feel there's a great affinity between reading a book and listening to a piece of music. You have your opening statement, you have, a, it devolves into something else, you refer back to the statement and it comes to some kind of closure. And that's the end of a movement in music, the same process. It's a continuum. I don't think it's leading to an end point. A story without an end.